Hi, my name is Leanne Demouche, and I'm the Water Resource Specialist here at New Mexico State University. I'm also the State Coordinator for the Community Collaborative Rain, Hell, and Snow Network called COCORAS. This is the second video of our training series. Today we're going to learn how to collect and measure precipitation or rain. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you need to know is, is what, um, what time should you be reading your gauge? We prefer that you get up and read your gauge every day at 7 o'clock. Okay? This is when the National Observers are checking all of their weather instruments. Um, but if you can read your gauge between the hours of 5 a.m. and 9, p or 9 a.m., we can still use this data for our mapping service. Now, if you read your gauge before 5 or you read your gauge after 9 o'clock a.m., we still want your data, but we're just not able to use this data in our mapping program that you see on, on our interactive website. Okay? Uh, like I said, we would prefer that you read it as close to 7 o'clock as you possibly can. Um, let's talk about reading your gauge. Um, reading your gauge is very easy, but it's also important to be accurate and to be consistent. Uh, your most common rain, your most common observation is going to be zeros. Now we want to stress to use to you, yes, we know that it didn't rain that day, but your zeros, the information for your zeros to us are just as valuable as the data that we get on the days that it does rain. So we would really like for you to enter in those zeros. Now, once you get very familiar with the Kokoros website, you'll see that one of the, pro, or one of the um, programs that you can use on entering your data is called Monthly Zeros. This is where you can go in into a calendar and you can <clears throat> click on all of the days that you had zeros and you can submit all of your zeros at one time. We encourage you to use this and we encourage you to do it at the end of every month to put in those, submit those zeros. They're just as important. Um, your second observation that you're going to see is what we call a trace. And a trace is where there's no water actually accumulated at the bottom of the inner tube. Now the inner tube here, this is an, one that we've taken out of another rain gauge, um, holds exactly one inch. The outer tube of your rain gauge holds exactly 10 inches and together they hold 11 inches of rain. Now on this tube you'll see little drops coming down the gauge. This is what you would put or enter in on your data for this would be a T for trace. When you see that there's not enough to read at the bottom of your gauge but you see droplets in your gauge then you will put this down as a trace for T. The next observation that you're going to see is what we would call um, a pretty good soaking rain. Now we've, just for an example, we've colored this water so you can see it a little bit more clearly in the gauge here. So let's say we have a, a really great soaking gauge, I mean rain. So it's going to fill up, as you see we've put it as blue, Okay, and here we have, you'll want to, when you read your gauge, you'll want to take your, um, you'll want to take the inside of your tube out and put it directly eye level to you so that way you can get a more accurate count. And right here we have 0 .20 or two hundredths of an inch. Okay, now we can't stress this enough. It's very important that you get your decimal points in the right area, okay? Because there's a lot of difference between two hundredths, which is 0 0.02, to two tenths, which is 0 0.20, to two inches, which is 2.00, okay? So in this gauge, if we took it out, we would have about 0 0.35, okay? Now, this is a really great soaking rain, rain for, especially here in New Mexico. I also want to talk about the, sometimes when on the surfaces of the inside of your rain gauge, you'll see like a little beveled in there. That, that, the friction 
on your round gauge here, okay? This is called a meniscus. And what you'll want to do is when you see a meniscus in your gauge, you want to read on the bottom of the meniscus, okay? So here we have a nice soaking rain, okay? Let's say that we have what I like to call a gully washer, okay? And so I mean it really rains what we call cats and dogs. In your rain gauge, there's a little niche or a little indention on the top. And what that dention, indention is going to do is, is it's going to allow, when you have a really great rain, it's going to allow the water to flow over into the bigger gauge, such as so. Okay, so that's a really great rain there. Okay, so we can't just look at the gauge like this and just read it, okay? So we're going to show you how to actually measure when you have over an inch of rain. The first thing you'll want to do is, is you'll want to take off the funnel, okay? And I want to stress right here, this little opening right here is very, very small. So don't really worry too much about evaporation in this, okay? You'll want to take the inside tube out, just like this, okay? And you'll want to put the water somewhere where it needs it, like a flower pot. Now remember, that was an inch of rain right there, okay? You'll want to take your funnel lid, put it on top of your inner tube, take your gauge off of your post, and slowly, and I stress this because it can fill up faster than you think, you want to slowly put the big gauge, water in the big gauge into the small gauge to measure it, okay? Again, put it at eye level, and right here we have exactly, it almost is almost right at a half an inch, but it's exactly 0.49. So all together with our inch of rain, we have 1.49 inches. And this is what you will go and enter into your, um, onto the website, okay? I also want to talk a little bit about some of the reports on our website, one of them is called an intense uh, rain report. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, when do you know when to do an intense rain report? Well, the rule of thumb, again, is that if you receive a quarter of an inch of rain in one hour, then what you want to do is, is you want to get online on the Kokoros website, if you're able to get online and do an intense rain report and report in there that you received a quarter of an inch of rain in one hour, okay? Now, let's say that it didn't last a whole hour. Let's say it, asked, it lasted, your rain lasted a half an hour. So what you, you can do is you can take that quarter, you can divide it in half. So if you got, let's say, half of a quarter in 30 minutes, then you would still be able to go online and do an intense rain report. So, we talked about how to measure over an inch, how to measure, you know, a nice soaking rain, how to measure a trace. This pretty much concludes how to measure precipitation using your rain gauge. Now, the next video series that we're going to be doing, or you're going to be viewing, is discussing how to collect and measure hail. We thank you for joining us, and we hope that you'll enjoy your rain gauge.